This is a research paper that caught my eye called Procedural Knowledge Ontology, or PKO. And then, so as you could probably decipher from the title, it deals with procedural knowledge. And then what is procedural knowledge? Very simplistically, um, your HR department deals a lot with procedural knowledge, right? Um, like cases would be a good example of, and the best example that I can think of from an engineering perspective of what procedural knowledge would be. Uh, and then so models tend to perform very poorly, uh, AI models, when it comes to procedural knowledge as opposed to other tasks, right? Like optimization tasks, prediction, classification, etc. cetera. Uh, procedural knowledge generally requires an, an ontology because it's broken up into different steps and then like there's like uh, multiple steps classes there's their own like its own category of language often there's different things that make procedural knowledge generally harder to solve for like for machines than than um human like general knowledge right or again the other types of categories of knowledge that i mentioned earlier uh, and then so this particular research paper, they lay out very specifically and in depth a uh, method. They create their own ontology and they release like lots of documentation around it, like tons of like the whole entire schema, the patterns, like everything. Right. I'm just in this video, like giving you uh, the tools needed to get started <laughs> and, and then you can go further and in depth from here. But they, I mean, they give you everything right. Uh, the first place to that they, you most people would go is their GitHub. But like up front, like the GitHub is like not the best place to go for this project up front. Just highlighting that. Right. Like so. Uh, if you just go to the, Git, the GitHub, it's it's their README, and then um, that that's it. Uh, and then you're gonna like not know what to do, uh, and you're gonna be like, "Wow, okay, I, I don't understand what this does." Go like the the first link here. If you do go to the GitHub, the the first link, the, the PKM, it's the thing here, right? Uh, and then so this is what we'll spend like our time looking through here. Uh, is kind of their documentation, right? And then so this is like the full on documentation for the full methodology. Uh, very specifically, you can see like there, um, so they have it, uh, the languages that they offer within their methodology for you to download are JSON LD. Uh, and then like a few other languages, Turtle is the big one, TTL. Um, you, like, so like um, TTL is like a very prompt, like uh, what their, framework is based off of so it's, it's like if you're not familiar with the programming language overall like that might be a hurdle in this so highlighting that up front this isn't built around or utilizing like python or uh anything like that or even like um it does lay on top of json ld so you can use json ld if you're familiar with that um and then so just putting that out overall but Within their uh, kind of how this works, right? Their their ontology works is it's uh, th it's broken up into labels. Think of these big um, categories as labels, right? And then so the big like labels that we have are classes, object properties, data properties, and named individuals. So almost like um uh, like a, a, a graph neural network or like a decision tree or something along those lines but um a little less linear like th this is like a, to me like a good blend between like a pure machine language how exactly the machines are actually interpreting these they're interpreting them via essentially geometric abstractions and utilizing distance and probabilistic distance measurements between these objects and concepts uh, and then giving them um, a linear framework to to operate within uh, that is good <laughs> overall right uh, it's never a, a bad thing and then also to if you want to exclude the LM model ex like explicitly from this like and not build out any sort of like um, LM architecture within this, I think that would actually be the best way to go, like to build this out from a pure linear perspective. Uh, you'll have a good like um, search and retrieval engine specifically 
for this model? I know people will, like the question is is like like well like can you wrap an LM model on around that? Then yes, absolutely you could <laughs> wrap an LM model on top of that. Nothing is stopping you or preventing you from doing that. I just like I don't like you're not going to get 100% accuracy out of this wrapping an LM model on top of it. Like I just want to highlight that up front. And then that's just limitations within like how the LM model is going to work within all of this architecture uh, and, and highlighting that up front, right? But so diving specifically into what exactly is uh, encompassed within here. So if we dive into like the, the, again, the labels in depth. So classes, we have action, activity, agent, duration, entity, and you can read all of them, right? Um, but then uh, like a thing, tool, um, temporal unit. And then object properties, we have like uh, addresses error, creator, next version, previous step, with role, was confirmed by. And then data properties, we have like um, new version motivation, notes by software agent, notes by user, question, question by user, keyword, issue solution by user, named ent individuals. We have approval, approved, canceled, completed, draft, in progress, pause, validation. Best way to like frame this in my head right just from a pure engineering perspective and from like an enterprise engineering is that when you're dealing with again cases would be the best breakdown of this right like and that's like i think hr is most heavily involved in procedural knowledge type of of uh, information. So cases f dealing with procedural knowledge, what this does is it gives it kind of a full framework and like a um, table, a, like a knowledge entity of uh, things that it would typically deal with when dealing with cases. <laughs> and then like training the model uh, on this framework overall just gives it an instance of uh, here's the situation that you could be faced with and then putting that in front of the model and then having the model like actually train on information like this and on this structure makes it able to uh, go through that process when it's actually faced with it right and, and so their benchmark testing that they show within the paper uh, is that it significantly uh, increases the the performance of the models on this and then also too i've done this as well um this is a kind of a like a, a mock-up of what this would look like in terms of like the code uh, and then so uh, how this would look like as far as like a breakdown for the model right and then so you can see you have the big labels here so like procedure steps execution issue feedback agent and then resource uh, and then these are tied into kind of like how like the the flow of like how the model would would go through um, and then dealing with like a particular issue right so in this instance it's dealing with a maintenance issue which is related to a coffee machine uh, and then so it realizes up front that there's four steps involved um, with the, that maintenance the coffee machine maintenance it creates like all of the the logs that are needed for that and created the steps, switched off the power, uh, then it removed and rinsed the filter, executed a diagnostic script, uh, checked water clarity, and then it went through the execution, logging the times, logging the issues, uh, incomplete rinsing, re-rinsed filter thoroughly, clogged filter not fully cleaned, it got an error of 001. Step two was it needs more detail on rinsing duration, so it needs to then uh, call in a technician and then so it opens up a tech ticket itself um, and then goes through um, and then uh, pulling from the resource of the coffee machine manual. <laughs> and then in this, like it's a, you know, example PDF uh, in this instance uh, that it pulled from and then that references from. And then so all of this gets logged and then this is what the model does in terms of actions related to this right and then so oftentimes this will be the result where the model doesn't actually solve the problem on its own but it's creating a ticket on its own and then passing that ticket on to the tech agent right onto the human to to then uh further troubleshoot and solve the problem um but then so all of that is manual like is is the automated part of the process and especially that ticket creation and then all of this logging right so like 
uh, to me, like the, the the most manual and tedious part of it is like what gets solved within this. And then, generally speaking, I mean, generally speaking, the the model is probably not going to solve the coffee issue uh, machine issue on its own. It could. <laughs> we're, I think we're a little bit far off from that, but uh, we're not far off from like all of this logging uh, and all of the benefit that you get from this, right? And then so dealing with these types of situations, I see it coming up more and more. Um, like these types of use cases, our HR department, our um, support department, dealing with cases, et cetera. How do we do, uh, how could we incorporate uh, AI, like um, machine learning within our environments in a like non-customer facing way and, you know, kind of dealing with more procedural knowledge <laughs> as opposed to predictive or categorization. Uh, here you go. Uh, here's a very good and, and simple example for you. And this research paper was really in depth. I'll leave a link to both the research paper of procedural knowledge ontology, uh, as well as a link to the, um, uh, their, um, what we're looking at here, their GitHub, and then so the mock-up I made for you so you can see kind of it from all different angles. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.